ended up reading accountancy. And therefore, you have combined your knowledge of the sciences, knowledge of e economics, and knowledge of politics. And you have brought this to bear on your writings. Number one, let me put this question. It's a very short one. A few weeks or a few months to general elections in this country. Pokers of members of hate and disunity. Political and regional intolerance were at work. And this was evident the print media, electronic media. People outside the country thought we were at war with one another. But we have regulatory framework to check these excesses. Is it inadequacy of these provisions in the framework or is a matter of neglect, neglect on the part of the operators of the framework? If confirmed, I mean if not posted to information, you will still be a member of the cabinet. What would you suggest would be a panacea to what we witnessed in the last elections? Number two may be more sensitive, but I, I want us to bear with me. Those of you who write about us in public life, never spare us at all. We are I'm patriotic. We are corrupt. And I know you have read well, very vastly, too. And I don't know whether you draw some of these experiences from the works of people like Voltaire, a fantastic writer and philosopher, that behind every big fortune there is a crime. Is that applicable to the Nigerian situation? Is it applicable to those of us only in the public service? Or you can apply that to the private sector. Thank you very much. Senator Dino Milai. The performing Senate President, my colleagues. My name is Dino Milai. I represent Kogi West Senatorial Districts. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, my colleagues, Malam Adamu Adamu, there is no doubt that you are a man of integrity. You are a hot pen, highly intellectually mobile and sagacious. And above all, a very close associate of the nemesis of corruption, President Muhammadu Buhari. And integrity pays. I have no doubt in my mind that my colleagues will support as I move a motion in support of integrity that after answering the questions, you take a bow and go. Thank you. Senator Hope Uzadiba. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Is he the president of the Distinguished colleagues. I rise not to second any motion, but to ask my questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nomini, I've gone through your CV. can see a very intellectual man of very vast experience. But I want to ask you, what is your clear understanding of the national and the foreign policy objectives? of this government you want to serve, if confirmed. And if these foreign object policies are consistent with the expectations, how is your cabinet going to leverage on it to attract more foreign direct investments to Nigeria? Number two. That's the question. question. How? Number two. Don't you hear question? 
we spend an average of 1.31.5 trillion in payment of subsidies and importation of petroleum products currently. And our economic mainstay is crude oil. If you are confirmed as a minister to serve, what suggestion will you bring to government to free this 1.3 trillion to 1.5 trillion for investments into social infrastructure so that we can make do with local production and refining capacity of our crude oil? Number, Number three. Ah. Yes. Number three. Nassif. But there was one second. How will you bring your experience? How will you bring your experience over years to ensure that the medium, the low income earners are supported? tacitly or directly by government, and incentives created for overall welfare of this class of citizens. Thank you, Mr. President. Those questions. Senator Shehusani, it is true I wrote a series of articles lamentations of a nation. And like every journalist, I think I put forward my views, which are like a hypothesis. And it is our belief that this government will probably set up a judicial commission of inquiry as it has been advised. And then at the conclusion of that investigation, you'll find out whether I'm wrong or right. And then we'll know what exactly happened in Boko Haram. And then you ask that I have a lot of interest in a certain country, how will that affect me if I become a foreign minister? I think everyone has interests, but I think the national interest is probably supreme, and that is what guides what you do in public life. And the question by Senator Akume from Benue, I think the real panacea for what happened in the country and what has been happening in the north here is probably to have respect for each other. And then when there is an election, to have good government. I think that will solve all the problems that we are facing as a nation. I don't think any other thing will, will do. All other things are probably half measures. And I also, I take my inspiration from any source that I read, including Voltaire. And the senator whose name I didn't get, he asked about how we will convert the 1.1 trillion subsidy into refining capacity. Oh, I think he answered all his questions. Yes, from the explanation he gave, I got the answers inside. Let me, let me just uh, thank you, distinguished colleagues. The nominee has taken some very important questions and, and has uh, addressed them. And I think it is the wish for him to take his leave. That is the mood I read. I read that mood very well. This is the nominee. Come on, take your leave.
a very short one there. And um, we're over with that of the fourth nominee for the day and the 35th ministerial nominee. We'll now be going or looking forward to the last nominee for the day.